Hello and welcome to a little talk about October Hugo in the home. So um, as always if you're watching live then don't forget to let me know that you're here. Um, either put in hashtag live, send me an emoji, send me questions as well. By all means I will do my best to answer them. And if you're watching on replay then you can put a hashtag replay in the comments below. So um, it's very much October and there's so much to enjoy about this month. I know some people are not keen on autumn, other people love autumn and it is really kind of when the hookah starts coming back into the home in the sense that most people know it. So I wanted to share with you some uh, Nordic principles for kind of starting to hookify the home if you like. This is completely a made up term by me by the way I think um, but some ideas for how you can um, kind of make your home more of a sanctuary as you're going into this month ahead but at the same time it's about going on a journey so it's not just about something very quick it's about being in the moment so this is very much specific to October and you might take some of it longer with you as well <clears throat> so um, what happens in October so obviously this is very much determined also by the weather let me just say so it depends on where you live I am talking about the Northern Hemisphere. I'm talking about the traditions that I've grown up with in Scandinavia and that I've taken with me as I've traveled all over the world. And now I'm living in the UK and the climate is a lot milder in many ways, but the seasons still follow each other. So um, it still very much works for me here. And those are basically the principles that I live by and that I teach um, and I incorporate in in the work that I do as uh, a coach as well. So this is really the time when in in the Scandinavia obviously we still want to try and make the most out of the outside because soon we will have to cocoon a lot more in the home. So in uh, Scandinavia it's about getting that balance. It's always about balance in life and the same goes uh, with a lot of the Nordic living principles that I that I teach. But it is it's it's fairly simple. It's like you know if it's still uh, possible for you to go outside then you go outside and you make the most of daylight. And let me just make it clear just because the sun isn't shining brightly from a clear blue sky that doesn't mean that you and your body doesn't benefit from daylight. It still does. Uh, today it's a pretty overcast here where I am in, uh, in southern uh, England and you know what I still get the benefit from the daylight and it still gives me energy. So it's about making the most of that but then we also want to try and take the seasonal transition into our home. And um, ways of doing that is obviously making the most of the fact that actually now it is getting colder. So what I love is that I can wear my comfortable warm clothes, you know, I've been digging out my jumpers, my scarves, although to be honest in the north we like wearing scarves also in the summer. So you'll often find if you go to Scandinavian countries we have summer scarves and we have winter scarves and I'm currently wearing kind of my in-between scarf. Um, and uh, where I live um, my wardrobe space is not enormous so I have made the transition now um, and um, that basically means that all my summer clothes have been put away and I've got out all of my winter clothes and it is a very cheap way of living because you don't go out shopping a lot. Sometimes it can be a bit annoying because sometimes I obviously I would like to see everything that I have but it's just not possible where I live. So in this way it just allows me to kind of go re, re, how to say, rediscover 
my own wardrobe, which is lovely because it means that um, I don't feel the need to go out and go shopping because a lot of my clothes I haven't seen for a very long time. They've been safely stored away um, in, in bags or simply just stored away at the back of the wardrobe so I haven't been able to get to them. Um, and now I've, I've kind of made the swap and I've gone like, oh, look at this and oh, look at that. And yes, sometimes you go like, oh, no, definitely. What? Why did I even bother saving that from last season? I'm going to pass it on to someone else um, or give it to a charity shop. Uh, and you might also discover that maybe, you know, your taste has changed slightly um, and that's okay too. But in many ways, I love it when I change in my wardrobe and I try and make a bit of a ritual out of it. So that involves cleaning the wardrobe uh, making the changeover, I'm folding everything very neatly and then I always try and add some uh, some smell in there too. So not just only for, for moth repellent but I like using things like sandalwood and uh, essential lavender drops or lavender um, sachets dried lavender to kind of put that in the wardrobe and um, it means that every time I open my wardrobe doors I get so incredibly happy and I do the same thing with my scarves I get my scarves out and it it just basically means that now I'm looking forward to kind of getting the scarf on in the morning it adds kind of a hookah feel and sometimes I just keep it on all day like today which is really nice so other things to do practically in the home. So this is the month where um, obviously in, in Scandinavia sometimes you know it's it's uh, cold throughout the year you might not make all of these changes but this is the month where I have always been uh, traditionally brought up with that, that we kind of make changes within the home to kind of accommodate the season. That includes decorations and uh, I sent out my email newsletter today with some essential tips on how to decorate your home naturally um, this this autumn. So um, kind of adding natural hygge elements if you like into your home and actually I've got some here. Uh, so these are some of the conkers that my son and I have been out getting. We're actually just getting ready to do some 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 conkers decorations with them. So I've got a whole bowl of those. We found lots of pine cones as well. So I'm going to make a little centerpiece with those. I think either this afternoon or tomorrow. Um, but this is also the time of year where obviously it's getting darker now, earlier. <clears throat> so the lighting is becoming increasingly important. And it means making sure that we have the right kind of light uh, throughout the house and especially Hugo lighting, okay? And I have actually invested in some new flameless candles. These are battery operated candles. And I'm a bit disappointed because this doesn't show, but basically um, this has got like a flickering effect. It, my camera doesn't pick it up. So I'll try and get a picture of it when it's a bit darker. Um, and Actually, when it's just a bit dark, it almost looks like a real candle, which is lovely. Right now, it just looks really, really naff. But at a distance in the dark, it actually has got that flickering effect and it looks like it's moving, which is nice. Okay, so I got myself um, a bit of a treat, some of those, which are off, uh, what you see, off, off, um, off limits. For, for my for my young kid because once you drop those they're going to be done he's dropped I had another set and he dropped it and uh, they are proper wax and it means that the wax breaks and yeah that's a bit annoying you can't glue that together I've tried um but I also have some other ones um which are on a timer in order to allow for you know make, making sure that they don't for don't get forgotten. Uh, obviously, uh, I, I like it when, um, especially in my darker rooms at night, all of a sudden, you know, there is there is a bit of light. For me, that really adds to that hygge feel. But I do, I do hate it. Like when last night I got up and I realized that my husband had forgotten to turn some of them off because uh, they weren't actually on the timer setting. So uh, that's a waste of battery. I, I I've got rechargeable batteries, but still I have to charge them. So, uh, so yeah, so now they're all on a timer. So they will come on. 
I can obviously still turn them off, but they will come on as strategically the right time. Um, and I tend to have those kind of placed strategically out throughout the home, uh, where I see them and in the darker places. And I think that is very important because to me, that really has that huge feel. Having said that, I really, really love live candles as well. I love my beeswax candles. Um, my sustainably sourced beeswax candles um, and I do use those as well but sometimes they are not that practical around the home and especially not if you've got smaller children um, or animals or if you have them anywhere near any decorations or crafting tables like um, in my home then having a live candle is just too much of a stress factor actually <laughs> um, and it is worth remembering that, uh, you know, always as we come into the autumn and the winter season, and again, I know this because I see the statistics every now and again, uh, in Scandinavia, that's where, you know, like fires in the home are always on the up, because uh, a lot of people obviously like to have the candles around, but then they might leave the room or it might get knocked. And, you know, that is obviously the dangers with light candles. Having said that, I love a live candle and I will have it um, at the right times and the right places when I can. The second next best, best I can't talk. The second best thing for me are the kind of the battery operated ones. And there's so many out there on the market with like the flickering effect or not. Um, and uh, I grew up in a home where my mother had asthma and she always struggled with like candles. And it's not surprising because if you look at, especially like normal, normal candles, if I can call them that, like normal um, paraffin uh, candles, wax candles, they are actually made um, out of uh, basically oils and byproducts of the oil industry and they release a lot of chemicals and soot into the atmosphere. So using candles, I always say make sure that you use them carefully and with full awareness a, of what kind of candle you're using and also um, if you like scented candles, uh, be aware that uh, even burning, like the, even if they're made with essential oils, burning them will still create, um, what do you call them, um, toxins that are released into the air. So you have to make sure that you ventilate your room, okay, because otherwise you're basically just inhaling uh, toxic uh, and, and tox to toxins, that's it, toxins. Um, okay, so obviously I think everyone is up to speed with candles and lighting. It's such an important part of Hugo because it really, really calms the nervous system. Oh, and I'll share another little thing. Um, because the mornings are now darker when we wake up as well. So my husband normally gets up early and he will turn the lights on. And then my son and I get up and we'll go like, oh, can't, ha can't have any bright lights in the morning. Um, we're both of a more, how shall I say, sensitive disposition. Um, so the first thing I will do is I will I will turn any overhead lights off that are not needed. I'll turn them off and I'll turn on the smaller um, lamps and lights around the, the house. I will draw the curtains aside. Um, and, and that's a, a much more soothing and calming way for me to start the day. And um, basically, the reason for that is because the lighting really affects our central nervous system. Uh, some people are more strongly impacted by this. But if you are um, of a more, people say sensitive, I don't actually even agree with that labeling. But if, uh, if you get very much affected by lighting, then that is the reason why. And it is fully acceptable to uh to to kind of put the boundaries down and say i want some soft lighting or i want to make sure that i have diffused lighting to kind of um uh have a more comfortable way of waking up or working and sometimes we need stronger light as well depending on what we're doing but keeping that in mind that is very important. And when it's all about the hygge, well, if you are doing anything like reading or crafting, you will need a concentrated light source to make sure that that's done safely. And if you're just mulling around the home, 
then you might just want that lovely soft spot lighting uh, around you. Add in a couple of fake candles, maybe, or like real candles. Okay, so another thing that um, we would always traditionally do this time of year is kind of get the throws out. So um, in uh, in Scandinavia, uh, I think every every home I've ever been to will always have a good selection of cushions and throws. Okay, and you also have to have. Um, well, some people say throws, it can also be blankets. Um, when I grew up, it was like blankets everywhere. You would always make sure you have a blanket in the car in case you get stuck in a snowstorm or something like that. Um, so really making sure that that is there. But it's the same thing inside the home. So this is kind of where the more heavy fabrics come out. And um, Sometimes, you know, you, you might not make one want to swap. And I've got a light summer blanket or summer throw. And then I've got a heavier one, which is like, um, yeah, like, like a really nice chunky heavy one uh, and a more earthy color. And um, I will normally bring that one out this time of year, whereas I pack it away as soon as we're coming out winter because I want to kind of get rid of these heavy fabrics but now is the time to introduce them for that extra warmth on Hugo. I will say that the, this sheepskin stays out all year round because I love it. Um, and uh, <laughs> sometimes I also keep my summer throw out because sometimes I will need it in addition to. Um, but also you might want to consider your cushions, you know, like if you've got some, uh, some light cushions, maybe now is more like the, the heavier ones. I've got some lovely woolly ones, um, or maybe you like, uh, sequin, no, not sequins, um, what was it called? Velvet, um, or, or something with texture, whatever texture you like, or maybe just have a play with the colors because um, I don't believe that we need to change our home all the time. And actually, if there's anything I think that is very unsustainable, it's like changing um, furnishings or decorations in the house all the time. What I believe in is that we have some key pieces, but what we might want to do is like rotate things. And this is again, a bit like with the wardrobe that it's kind of, if you you get a new home, it transitions um, with the seasons and it means that it has a different feel. And obviously these ones will be packed away a lot of, you know, during the summer, um, or I might only keep one or two out, but now is the time to kind of get things out again and create more of that Hugo feel. So finally, another thing to kind of rotate, we've talked about uh, the, the lighting, we've talked about kind of the soft furnishings and the wardrobe. So another thing uh, to think about now that we're coming into October is very much the food as well. So this is going to vary depending on personality, it's going to depend on where you live and your traditions. So uh, this is just purely from a Nordic um, point of view and you might want to consider it and that goes for anything that I say to see if you can adapt it to uh, your current life because this is very subjective, this really depends on also where you live and how it works in your, obviously, in your life. But food. Okay, so as we come into uh, the colder months, this is where often we crave like more hearty foods. Um, so this is kind of the season of the soups. Uh, I love a nice gazpacho during the summer. Um, and also, you know, like maybe in the late summer, you know, it can be quite nice with a, with a light soup for dinner. Uh, but this is really the season with hearty um, roasts and stews and soups uh, and bakes kind of come in. And it adds that sense of comfort. And I am a strong believer in eating according to the seasons as much as possible. And for me, it's become, I won't say easier um, with the fact that we have an allotment and we grow a lot of our own vegetables and fruit, but also it, um, it just makes more sense because kind of what's on offer is 
kind of what the body craves. Um, we went to a restaurant the other day and they had some lovely strawberries with, with some of the desserts and it was lovely, but obviously it's not strawberry season. Um, so apart from the color, for me, it didn't really add that much to the plate. If they had chosen the raspberry, on the other hand, I would probably have, have enjoyed that so much more. We are living in a world where we can have any food that we um, require because it might have been flown across the planet. Um, and if we want to have our hygge to be sustainable as well and not only make us feel good but also do good, um, then it's really worth about thinking those air miles on the food, um, so the food that we buy. Uh, whether it's locally produced, is it organically produced? And even if you can't, you know, afford maybe uh, to buy or organic produce or local produce, you know, it's being aware and making the choices where you can. So a couple of things that is in season now, and this is almost like a list for my allotment at the moment. So obviously um, the the fruits are things like apples, pears and quince, and some apples will be um, ready to eat now. Other apples, more like cooking apples, will go into storage and they will sweeten over time. Um, you have your, your root vegetables, like the, the onions and the parsnips and the beetroots and the potatoes. And you obviously have got things like pumpkins and marrows, uh, mushroom. It's so mushroom season at the moment and it's lovely. Um, and obviously other things like cauliflower and cabbages and things like that. And they all lend themselves to make really hearty, comforting dishes. Um, they don't need to be heavy they don't need to be uh, unhealthy they don't need to be served with lots of meat but um they they just add kind of again that sense of hygge i think that kind of comfort and i mean i personally l love it you know when it's kind of really dark and cold outside maybe very windy and you come home and you just have soup with a bit of homemade bread or something like that it's like it's heaven and that is if if food could could give you a hug i feel like that would kind of be it so there you go so how to uh, have the october hygge in your home the changing over um of uh clothing furnishings um and also maybe like decorations, like I mentioned, you know, like and uh, which is also in my uh, newsletter for this week. And obviously uh, food as well as we're changing over, um, which can have uh, a really healing and, and nourishing effect on us as well. <clears throat> and allowing ourselves to transition the cuisine a bit like with with the seasons and that doesn't mean that it has to be you know seven days a week but you know like easing yourself into it and kind of letting all those aspects add to the hygge feeling in your home um talk to all your senses from your uh, from your sense of touch you know and all the lovely textures to uh, your eyes with the colors that you choose the lighting that you choose and obviously your sense of smell with uh, the food that you're creating or if like me you like to um, do up your wardrobe and add some lovely natural scents in there as well scents can't say that anyway so some autumn hygge for your home I hope you find it useful. I will just check. Normally it tells me, as always, if there are any comments. And sometimes I don't see the comments until afterwards. So there you go. So if I've missed your comment, then uh, bear with me and I will try and reply later. I hope you have a lovely uh, October week ahead, month ahead. And soon it will be Halloween, so that will be kind of uh, one of my talks as well. And there will be some inspiration, obviously, following that. Uh, but for now, let's just enjoy the best of autumn. 
Have a lovely week. Take care. Bye.